We have been traveling the rich lands of East Africa, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful region, talking to farmers wherever we go. We have given them the help and knowledge they need to improve their farming methods, increase their income, and turn their farms into good business for the future. Join us and our experts on this journey across East Africa and share the family's experiences as they make these changes. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled all over Kenya and met many farmers. We have decided to cross the borders and meet other farmers and exchange farming techniques. Welcome to the land of a thousand waterfalls. We are in Uganda! Shamba Shape Up is in Bukuhula. Yes, in Bulambuli district. So let's go meet the farmers. Let's go meet them. John and Irene, we are very happy to be in Uganda. Naomi, are you happy? Yeah, I'm very, very happy. Yeah, okay, great, great. How long have you lived here, John? Almost uh, 48 years. What are you growing? I grow maize, uh -huh. uh, beans, sunflower, cassava, cotton, potatoes, wow. even uh, sorghum. Okay. Mm -hmm. And which one is doing poorly right now? Uh, maize, because uh, there's a lot of uh, diseases. Mm. So, and is there anything else you do apart from farming? Okay, I'm a teacher. Aha. Uh -huh. What about you, Irene? I'm a farmer. So, what do you have in the farm? I have chickens there. Mm -hmm. Here is the, the helper. The piglet is there. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the children. And the children. <laughs> Do you help your parents in the farm? Who helps? Who helps? Who loves helping here? All of us. It's good to see that the kids are also a bit interested in farming, which is very good. Well, Shamba Shape Up is here in Uganda, and we don't come alone. We've come with experts who will talk to you about your crops, and we'll see how we can help around the farm and make sure that you are shaped up completely. How does that sound? That's good. It sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Does it have to come to this? You're telling me things totally I don't understand. Totally forgotten we are in Uganda. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Saying a greeting to me. You think I don't know the answer to that? Do you want me to answer you back? Yendi. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. I know some okay. of these things. Okay. okay, fine. It's a lovely family. Smiley faces everywhere. That's true. And there's lots of work to be done. Mm -hmm. What do you want to start with? Orange flesh, sweet potatoes. Mm, and what else? And I'm also dealing with cattle. Aha, uh -huh. I'm going to help them with the maize. Mm -hmm. So I'll do that as I call in mayor to help with the soil fertility and fertilizer. There is a lot of work to be done. Okay, go ahead, see you. Oh, I thought you knew Luganda. Maize is an important crop that is found on every shamba for food and for sale. John and Irene have had some challenges with their maize and with all the children needing good nutrition, our friend from Azareka is here to introduce them to a special maize variety. What is QPM? Uh, QPM is a quality protein maize because it has that component of having proteins. It, is, it has double benefit. Moses, let's hear about the protein qualities in this maize compared with others. This longer five has additional amino acids, which actually has made it more proteinous or nutritive than any other maize. That's why we call it quality protein maize. And it's good for the whole family. It is good for the whole family. If you look at it, actually, it is a variety which was actually bred to help the disabled farmers who are unable to save by meat all the time who are unable to say buy milk all the time. Research tend to show that if you take a mug of QPM porridge, it looks like taking a mug of milk. Mm. So in most cases, we encourage them to feed children mm -hmm. and more so even the, the moms, eh? mm -hmm. the mothers should mm -hmm. always feed because it keeps them nutritive. Mm -hmm. Yes. How does that sound, John? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is the comparison in uh, harvest compared with normal maize? The local varieties are really poor yielders. But this long five, this QPM, hmm, yields much better in a hectare 
under good management, mm. you are likely to get four tons per hectare. Mm. Yes. That translates to how many bags? Mm. Four thousand kilos. Mm. Yes, in a hectare. Mm -hmm. what, what makes it better? One, it is an improved variety. Uh, two, it is uh, tolerant to drought. Should drought come in, mm. so that's an and when it is that's mm. advantage it has over the local. Mm. That sounds. Yes. That sounds like yeah. a very good seed. Mm. Can we see it? Yeah. I came with the with the, the with a sample of the seed. Mm -hmm. So now, now that you have the seeds here, and the farmer look very interested, mm -hmm. how does he plant? The way you plant QPM longer five is not different the way you are planting other hybrids. From row to row should be seventy five centimeters. Then from hole to hole, from plant to plant. Mm -hmm. At 30 centimeters, he plants two seeds. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now I see these seeds are treated. So does a farmer need to add fertilizer, manure? I'm advising a farmer to use fertilizer. Mm -hmm. We have always encouraged that try your best, you'll get better yields. Mm -hmm. Apply DAP, that is the ammonium phosphate, at time of planting, four weeks from germination. There's also this fertilizer which you need to put, that is urea. Hmm? Call it nitrogen fertilizer. Should have weeded before you apply. The weeds, the rooting system just close the surface. So they'll be the first to take up this fertilizer. Disadvantage in the maize, which has its roots <laughs> down. Apply when there's enough moisture in the soil so that it easily taken up by the maize crop. What did the percentage germination for this if I plant? Of course it should be over 90 percent. Because seed company is supposed to test mm. the germination. Should be above 90 percent. That is recommended. So now farmers would you like to try the QPM maize? In fact we, uh, we are happy yes. and we have been told that uh, it has a, a protein component in Aha. it which uh, even saves us to overspend. On meat. On the meat and the milk. <laughs> <laughs> it was time to plant maize, and all the children were excited to help. So we got working. Quality protein maize is planted just like any other maize seed. Prepare the land. Make rows 75 centimeters apart and holes 30 centimeters apart. Put in one bottle cup full of DAP. Add well decomposed manure. Mix with the soil. Add two seeds per hole and cover. So now me tell me, how is your Luganda coming along? Perfect. Perfect. Yes. Is it? Yes. So tell me, where am I coming from? <laughs> That's wrong. What do you mean? Kasoli. Ah, yes, maize. Yes, I'm from oh. Kasoli. I'm from the maize. And you're going to? Nte, to the, the cows. cows. How, how yeah. difficult can it get? How difficult can it get? <sighs> John and Irene's cow has a good shed and seems well fed, but our friends from Cooper's had a look and noticed some very vital things that needed improving on. So, Bet, you've had a look around the livestock. What is your general observation? I'm impressed with the livestock. They are generally in good health. What about the feed? They are fresh feed, the napia, a bit of uh, banana leaves, and also they have a source of protein in the potato vines. Right. Minerals, which was a bit lacking. A heifer requires minerals, especially now at the age of nine months going forward. We need to prepare that heifer for coming on heat mm -hmm. and for conception. So yes, this is a time now she needs minerals. These are very good minerals, it's called CKL Extra. Very good for minerals for the young ones. Up to the age of six months for heifers, still this will do very well. This one can be suspended and then they come leaking. So that is very good for building the bones and also for heat. This is what the heifer requires. Mackling Plus to prepare her for coming on heat. So we'll require a trough for, for putting the minerals. So maclic plants will be put there. They keep feeding on daily. It's a continuous feeding. Also good for the goat because as she gives milk to feed these young ones. She needs to prepare also to come on heat again. So she also needs maclic plants. So that means you'll require both. And then 
for growth because we want them to grow fast. Whether mama wants to sell them for school fees. So they need proteins. Other than the proteins from the potato vines, Kupakula is a good source of protein for building the body, especially the young ones, and also preparing that heifer because she needs to come on heat around 250 kilos. So to speed up that, we give a protein called Kupakula. Kupakula is mixed with this well chopped napia so that it becomes uh, available for, for the cow. One more, you want the animal to utilize all the feed that is available. You don't want any wastage. So you give this one called diamond V, it's an addition to the feed the animal is given. It will ensure proper digestion, weight gain, and uh, increase in production once the animal starts producing milk. So at the age uh, the, the calf is in right now, what should they be sat on immediately like now? This is now the time you need to put Maclic Plus and put it daily. Uh, many farmers will fear that they will consume a lot. No, the animal will regulate. It will eat what is enough and leave the rest. Will I use it when having a spoon, yes, the measurement? Yes. We need to make a trough. Yeah. And then we, we pour it inside there. So it will lick what it wants. And then it will leave the rest. So you've heard Irene's, what your cows need is most minerals and supplements. Yeah. <laughs> and so what began with the expert's advice? To have a good trough that is also well protected from rain and sun. So far, so good. We've dealt with Nte. Cows. Casoli. Maize. And Naomi. Me. <laughs> and all is going so well right here. I will be back right after the break. Welcome back to Shamba Shepherd. We are still here in Bufuhula. In Blambori district. In Uganda. Where Tony is. Masaba, a tall heroic warrior, <laughs> and you are Vundukuza. Which means sweet, sweet potatoes. Because you are going to deal right now with sweet potatoes and much, much more. John and Irene grow local sweet potatoes. These are good, but there's an even better variety. Some from International Potato Center is here to tell them more about it. You've walked around and looked at the sweet potatoes. Are they planted properly? They are not planted properly. Mm -hmm. We just need to improve on the spacing. Right. Uh, the farmer planted the four cuttings in one spot. When you place them at one point, they struggle for nutrition from the soil. Right. But when you spread them, each of them has its point where it is feeding from. She's using hips, as we have seen. Mm -hmm. The hips are good, are also recommended. We recommend that every one square meter as they are, we should place three cuttings. Ah, I see. Do they have uh, the orange flesh sweet potato? She's okay. missing the orange sweet potatoes. Okay, so mm. tell us about it. The orange sweet potato yes. is not very different from the local sweet potato. In terms of management, in terms of handling, the only additional component is that it has the benefit of vitamin A. Uh -huh. It is rich in vitamin A. They are supposed to be this orange color. So in terms of consumption, for Irene who already has the local varieties, you need just a small piece to get the daily requirement uh -huh. of vitamin A. Right. So this is... The what it flesh. is, yes. the orange flesh like color. Like. The deeper the orange, the richer. Yes. Yes. You talked about different ways of consuming the orange flesh sweet potato. Now, what are they? Peels and boils. We also mash it with beans, with cassava. But we have come up with other products. Donuts. Aha, uh -huh, donuts. Crisps. Uh -huh. Chapatis. Yes, uh -huh. yes, we make also sweet potato porridge. Mm -hmm. Flour, we make flour, and then it's very nice for children, for rats, and then especially yes. to increase their yes. body yes. strength. Yes. To give children a healthy boost, add mashed OFSP to their porridge. There are cakes also. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can make have a potato cake. Yes. For a wedding, for anything, for a birthday. Okay. Mm. How do you plant it? In terms of planting, choose clean planting material that is free from pests 
and diseases, especially sweet potato virus disease and the sweet potato weevil. Irene indicated she has a problem of strong which is weevils. These sweet potato weevils lay eggs at the lower portion of, of the vine. Then, after laying, they hatch and penetrate. Yes. So, when it gets to the sweet potato root, they start growing, they feed, and they spoil. Mm -hmm. So, from the selected vine, cut 30 centimeter long cutting from the topmost part of the plant. Right. Yeah. Then, uh, like Irene, who is planting on mounds, we recommend he plants three cuttings per heap right. and scattered, not in one place. Yes. Sweet potato needs at least 60 days of adequate moisture in the soil yes. to get good yields. We recommend early planting, weeding. It helps to remove competition between the crop and the weeds. And also it helps to cover the cracks. The weevils also use those cracks to go and lay the eggs straight on the roots. On the roots. Yes. Most of these new varieties take three to four months right. and then they start harvesting. Mm. Thank you so, so much. So now I think it's time to plant, to for sure how to plant. Yeah, we, yes, we need to see how plant. to plant. So, following the advice, we got planting. First, select good vines, 13 centimeter long cuttings taken from the top with at least three nodes. Then, make mounds one meter in diameter. Plant three cuttings in a triangle. Always plant early to get the use of rains as sweet potatoes need a lot of water. Ah, Tony, ah, we've learned so much about the orange flesh sweet potatoes mm. and also learned something else. Yes, what? The meaning of Masaba. Oh, the name Masaba? Yes. The tall heroic warrior who came down from heaven. Oh, no, that's not what it means. It simply means stranger. You know what? I'm going to deal with soil fertility. A farm relies a lot on the health of its soil. To help the farmers know the state of the farm, we brought in an expert from Mayor Fertilizer to talk to us. Miss Angunyi, I saw you and the farmers walking around, looking at the crops. It is a lovely shamba, what do you think? Yeah, we've seen a lot on the farm and uh, they are doing quite some good work. Mm -hmm. However, the crops are not looking that uh, healthy. By looking at the crops, mm -hmm. just a simple look, you can tell that there's something that's yes, not yes, yes, working yes. out. Yes, there's something somewhere that is missing. So tell me, what exactly did you see and how can you tell? When you look at the crop, there's no uniform growth. There are some crops that are short. They are struggling to come up. Mm -hmm. You see some, they are withering off. The leaves are turning yellow. The leaves are not dark green. They are somehow pale. Mm -hmm. That means there's some uh, nutrition um, imbalance in the soil as they are taking up the nutrients from the soil. Where does he need to start from? First of all is to sample the soil, which I'll show him. We'll do the sampling together with them. Then after, he can take the soil to where the soil can be analyzed, either in the national laboratories or he can send to us across in Mare, mm -hmm. where we can analyze those soils. And once the soil has been analyzed, now we'll be able to understand what's in that soil. When we understand what's in that soil, we will recommend a better fertilizer that will be able to support his crops uniformly, health-wise, to maturity, for him to enjoy the benefits of his farm. Mm -hmm. yes. So what are the disadvantages of a farmer not taking his soil for a test? One, you will never know the amount of nutrients that you will need to add in that soil. Mm -hmm. Either you will underbuy the fellow that you need or you will overbuy. When you overbuy, it becomes very expensive. Mm -hmm. When you underfeed or underbuy, you will not attain your maximum yield. And a farmer can know what to grow. Yes, 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 yes. Once you analyze the soil, you know the pH range of that soil, and then you will be able to, to, to categorize the crops that you can grow in that kind of a pH range. Mm -hmm. Yes. Irene, how, how do you plant your crops? How do you know where to plant what? Yeah, just plant like that. Just like that. Mm. Today, potatoes here. Yeah. Maize here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they need, again, also to organize the farm in such a way that they can do it to co rotation. You know, for example, when you plant leguminous crops in this field, mm -hmm. and then next time you plant their maize, 
you'll have uh, used the crops to add nitrogen in that soil. So when you bring the maize, it will utilize the nitrogen that legumes have left in the soil. Mm. So it's also good to rotate. Today you plant sunflower here, tomorrow you plant sweet potato here, then you rotate the farm. So crop rotation yes. is quite important. It's quite important, mm. yes. Now, John, have you noticed any changes in uh, your harvests? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, at first, when I used to grow maize, mm -hmm without applying fertilizers, mm -hmm. I used to get four bucks in a, an acre. Mm -hmm. But when I started applying fertilizers, I got 15, between 15 and 20. Mm -hmm. So there's an increase yes. Yes. when yes. you started using fertilizers. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now you keep using fertilizer yeah. all the time yes. Yes. without knowing the, the soil <laughs> pH. Yes. yes. What kind of fertilizer are you using? I normally use NPK and uh, DAP. We are continuous use of DAP for a long time. It will make the soil become very acidic. acidic. And when the soil becomes very acidic, some nutrients in the soil will not be available. And when they're not available, it reduces the yield. So with the time, you will start realizing that your farm, the yield starts to reduce. reduce. Now from the 15 to 20 bags, to again to 4 bags. So what you need to do now is we have your soils analyzed, then we understand what's in the soil. So now how do we collect these samples? I'll show them how to do it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you ready we pick some samples of your soil? Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, are you nervous that this, the results will come poor? Indeed. <laughs> when collecting soil samples, you can use the tools available on the farm. Choose three places at random on the farm. Remove the topsoil, dig out the subsoil and collect a sample at each point. Mix these subsoil samples and put in a plastic bag or container that can be well marked to your name, location and contacts and then send to the lab. In this changing climate, we have to adapt to the scarcity of water and start harvesting rain. The family gets its water far away and the girls usually have to make many trips to collect it. If you use guttering to catch rainwater, you have water at home all the time. Make sure your gutters are strong and well maintained. What are you doing? Part of Baganda culture. Oh, please, please, please. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, okay. No, no. That's why I say don't do that. Please. Okay, okay. All right. Sit there now. Oh. Rest. All right. Take it easy. Here's your mark click plus. All right. Rest. Lots of work to be done. The choice of seeds is very important to get a good crop. What should you know about when buying seed? Let's find out from David Okello from Agra. First things first, let's talk about seeds. Now, seed is the basic unit of agriculture. This one comes with itself some challenges, like in the purity of the seed, the age of the seed, all those things which um, they need to be very keen on. Mm -hmm. From the crops <clears throat> you've seen, what, what do you think the main problem is with John's sunflower plant here? First of all, the planning, and then is having a panna hybrid here. We should be seeing a uniform crop here. That's not what we are seeing. Then secondly, um, he's just doing the second weeding. Now the crop is about to start budding. We would have expected him now to have completed at least second weeding sometime back. So he's late. Yeah, he's late. And then now um, the variety he picked, the panna. Previously he was growing open pollinated variety. He can save his seed for about six seasons. So he jumped into panna, which is actually high yielding but uh, he has not done the cost-benefit ratio of keeping an open pollinated variety. John, why did you change the sunflower seeds from what you are using earlier to what you are using now? It was because the sunflower in weight is heavier than this one. Make more, of you wanted to make more money? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> is that advisable? It is advisable so long as um, it doesn't come with its own baggage. It, when one goes for hybrid, a farmer leaves, whether it is open pollinated or self to go to hybrid, you know that you're going from almost subsistence to commercial. You need to put some stringent operation to make sure that you realize the yield because the price for hybrid seed is twice the price of uh, you know open pollinated variety. So you should have consulted. You should have consulted. 
Yeah, so you should have come and actually seen the sunflower, both the release variety and the one which are upcoming. Mm -hmm. So from that kind of interaction, yeah. a farmer should be able to make an informed decision mm -hmm. of what he could expect of a variety. Mm -hmm. Hybrid varieties give better yields than the open pollinated varieties, but they also need a lot of work. This is something to consider when buying hybrid seeds. Mr. Okello, what should John and Irene do, you know, the main, main points, to make sure that their farming can turn into a business, and a good business at that? The first thing would be you should have to first uh, map out this uh, five-acre plot and then zone it out to which crops should fit where and which rotation scheme you should follow. And John also need to go beyond his own farm here, visit seed fairs, visit agricultural shows, mm -hmm. And uh, John, you also first to start also getting good, credible seed from uh, a stockist or seed company which can guarantee you good germination and then good feedback and extension services. And then also you visit uh, the narrow research station. We are there for you people. And storage, so they can keep the crops and wait for a good, good price. True. Good storage. Yeah. All right. And we usually say sky is the limit. Yeah, you've heard that, John? Yeah, we've heard. Sky is the limit. <laughs> The feeding troughs for the cows and the goats are complete. So it is time to test them and give the animals their treat. Well, we've come to the end of our nice shape up here. We've been so happy. We've learned so much. So John, you promised to follow the expert advice? I'm going to implement on what you have given me. In fact, I'm going to put it into practice. Starting from when? From today on livestock management. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, children, will you help your parents to do that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you like us to stay here? Uh -huh. Thank you very much. We have enjoyed our stay here. It's been wonderful working with you guys. And if anybody asks you where your farming has improved, you will tell them it's because of... To receive all Shamba Shape Up leaflets, SMS the word ALL with your name and address to 30606. If you'd like to receive just the leaflet for this farm, SMS Farmer, that's the name of the farmer, with your name and address to 30606. Shamba Shape Up is online. To learn more about today's topics or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashapeup.com. Select the episode and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shape Up, to get more information, get involved in discussions, and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter, at Shamba Shape Up.